Good morning to you from my car. I'm in an area here called Pakefield and um, on the top of a small cliff and there's a car park here. Uh, I'm actually surrounded by quite a lot of seagulls. There's one outside the car at the moment uh, looking at me as if I'm going to throw them some chips or something. Um, but this area, Pakefield, is quite interesting. Um, I've spoken from it before because it has quite a historic church and it's also known for the fact that Houses have been lost here. And what do I mean by that? Well, soil erosion, the sea, has just literally worn the cliffs away and the houses that stood on the cliffs. And the homes were lost. And it was a slow process, bit by bit, over time, the sea just washed the cliff away till eventually the, the houses were, were, well, they just were no longer habitable and the people were forced to leave. And it just made me think about God's word this morning and um, how important it is that we are on the alert all the time, that we're before God all the time, because the enemy, he doesn't always come in like a flood. The scripture speaks of that, of course, but he also has his subtle ways and he eats at you bit by bit by bit, eats at our houses, and the foundations that they're built on. And Deception, of course, being one of the biggest ones. Sin, of course. And then, slowly, bit by bit, the foundation weakens. And down we go. I want to share a psalm this morning with you. And I was thinking about all the psalms of David. Um, this one here is uh, Psalm 5. And what crossed my mind is that David wouldn't have sat down and penned these psalms one after the other. These would have, each one of them would have been an experience of time that he was going through. Um, a particular event, uh, a particular happening in his life, something that spurred him to write that particular psalm. And um, it's the same really, I suppose, when I sit here some mornings and I feel, what do I say to folk? What do you say to me, Lord? And then he'll take me to a particular place, a particular passage as he has this morning. And... Um, Something spurs you on and uh, you remember a particular day for a particular event. And I think it's, uh, it's pertinent. But God wants something from us. He requires certain things from us. And uh, David was fully aware of that and in his prayers as well. And uh, I'd like to just share something from the 12 verses of Psalm 5, I've just got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven points really here um, that I'd like to share. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. The first thing that struck me about that was um, our words must be true words. Our meditation must be thorough. We can't just come to God in a, in a light-hearted fashion and just expect him to um, give ear to everything that we uh, just throw at him, basically, without any thoroughness, without any meditation. David sat before God. That's the point I want to get across here. David sat before God and his words were particular. His words were thought through because he was meditating. He was meditating on what he was going to say. And I think that's an important thing with prayer. Sometimes I find I, before I get into bed at night, I, um, <clears throat> I like to get down on my knees and just pray. I'm often very tired and uh, I know that I can't do it for very long. But I think at times um, we all can be a bit slack, can't we? We want to get into bed. We want to finish, even finish praying and just trust that God will do the work. We don't always persevere. It can be sometimes also that we're praying to the Lord at the wrong time. Um, it's the wrong situation. We're not particularly moved. And uh, we want God to hear. This is the issue here. Give ear to my words. Make sure that what we are saying is something that is coming from our hearts. It's coming from a true and a repentant heart. Verse 2, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. There's David making a declaration. 
In verse 3, he goes, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Maybe it's in the morning when we've rested, we're fully awakened. Sometimes we give our best to God, don't we? And that's the question I have in my mind. Do you lift your voice to him in the morning? Does he hear your prayer in the morning? Are you too rushed? Are you too swept away with what you're about to do in the day? Does he hear your voice? Remember what David said, give ear unto my words. If we don't speak the words, he doesn't hear. Because sometimes our prayers are half-hearted. They're not fully. They're not fully true. They're not thorough. Does he hear your voice? For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Verse 4 there. It's going on. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. God haters are known to him. God knows the hearts of every man. Remember, it was said of Jesus, he knew what was in men. We can be comforted in the fact that God knows the hearts of the iniquitous. God knows the hearts of those that hate him. He knows what they're like. But as for me, David speaks for himself here, but as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Remember, there was no soil erosion under God's holy temple. You went into God's house, you could be sure you were standing on a sure footing <laughs> and that it wasn't going to give way. Nothing could erode the temple of God. You are the temple of God. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't have to be eroded because you've got every strength and every power at your at disposal. Verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of thine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. I wrote this down. If you haven't got enemies now, you will have as time ticks on to the final period of human history. Blessed are those who try you, persecute you for righteousness sake. Remember that, that is when the kingdom of heaven is for you. If you haven't got enemies now, you will have. Jesus said in Matthew 24, they will betray you, they will turn you over to the authorities. They'll think they're doing it because they're serving, they think they're serving God. David had many enemies. What did he ask God for? He said, make thy way straight before my face. We can walk a straight path when we're being tempted to walk a crooked path. So let's be warned today. Our enemies will increase as time goes on. We see that tightening in the world. I've spoken about it so often. The tightening around us spoke about the internet cables a few weeks ago, that strangulated feeling that I felt that how the world and its technology is beginning to bind us, mould us into its ways, into its forms of thinking. We have to make our way straight. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Verse 9, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. God knows these men and women through and through. There were even youths, weren't they, in the days of Elijah, when they shouted, go up thy bald head. And he turned round and they, was it the bears that um, ate the children up? 
for cursing the man of God the way they did. God knows the hearts of each, man, woman and child. He knows what they're going to grow up to be. That beautiful blonde baby boy that grew up to be Adolf Hitler. God knows what's in each of our hearts. He knows what's in our children's hearts. Our comfort is still in him. Verse 10. This is a key verse here. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. David prayed for the destruction of his enemies, not their salvation. I spoke about this a few weeks ago. I said that there are times when God says, don't make that prayer. Don't make that prayer for that person. He leads us to those he wants to lead us to. But he knows the hearts of men. And he knows those that will be destroyed. David prayed, destroy thou them. There comes a time, and there will come a time, when we will openly see more and more who are our enemies, as much as we will see who those are the children of God, who are those that really love the Lord. It will start to become more and more evident as time gets closer to the end. And the last two verses here. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. It was like the way it ends on this wonderful note here. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favour wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Yes, he eventually will bless the righteous. He will bless those that endure to the end. And the key is righteousness. And we get joy, we get favour, we get protection. Compassed, it's a lovely word. He will compass us as with a shield. You can think of it as a 360 degree shield. A protection above our head, under our feet, around us, compassing us fully enclosing us in his love and his power. So may God give us that discernment in these last days to know who's who and what's what, and when and where we should be in Christ so that we can have maximum effectiveness for him. And as I said there, David ended that psalm in joy because he knew his God and God gave ear unto his words. His words were true, and he could rejoice in the fact that the Holy Spirit witnessed with his spirit that he was a son of God, a man after God's own heart. Have a blessed day.